In round two of the US Championship, we saw how Fabiano Caruana coped with the winner were French. And in round seven, you're going to see how he coped with the classical variation of the French defence. So Caruana with white against Varujan Akobian, who's originally from Armenia, but uh, has represented uh, the States for a few years now. And here we go with the classical. So we had the winner in round two and now the classical variation. And the classical has become the main line of the French over the past couple of decades. It entails a little less risk than the winner because you're not giving up your dark squared bishop. Two main moves. Bishop g5 here or pawn to e5 and Fabiano just plays the pawn to e5 straight away and f4 to support that all important e5 pawn so white has this lovely space advantage but now black counters attacking the d4 point and that pawn can't be supported by a pawn here that's important and that provides black with counterplay as that's a slightly soft spot in white's position. Now there are many many ways to play this line with black. I think that's one of the attractions from the black point of view that you can play it in a variety of different ways. You can play with knight c6 and a6 and b5. You can also play with knight c6 and queen b6. Lots of ways. But currently bishop e7 is quite a trendy way to play. Just holding the tension in the middle of the board. And everything pretty normal so far. So Fabiano looks perhaps to castle queenside, although that's absolutely not obligatory in this position. And here, well, this is a very standard position. And well, the normal move is simply to castle kingside. It's the most popular move. But b6 has come to prominence over the past couple of years. Just holding the tension so you can see that, well, so certainly for the moment, white doesn't want to exchange here because then black will have this beautiful pawn centre. That's not advisable. And Caruana has had this position before and he's retreated the knight, knight d1 in order to support the pawn on uh, d4 and then switch the knight either to f2 or e3 later on. Bishop e2 is also a possible move uh, with similar idea and then simply knight d1. Of course that's quite slow and gives black also time to find his feet in this, in this position. But Caruana here plays a much more aggressive move, bishop b5. Now normally we wouldn't want the bishop on this diagonal. Normally we think of this bishop coming to d3 at some later point. But it's a very interesting idea. It's all about just rapid development. So that knight needs defending. Uh, queen c7 played. Sometimes it's interesting, not I mean, bishop b7 is possible, but sometimes that bishop can come out to a6. So that's one of the ideas about leaving the bishop on c8 for the time being. And here, previously, castle's king side has been played, but Fabiano went castle's queen side. And incredibly, this is, um, according to my database, uh, a new position, although, uh, of course, it's, it's a very typical kind of position for this variation. Now very often castling queenside at such an early stage with black's pawn still on c5 is a mistake because after c4 then you can fall prey to a quick attack with a6 and b5. Here the situation is very different indeed because with the bishop vacating f1 then a quick attack with f5 is actually extremely dangerous and black simply doesn't have time to get his queenside counterplay going 
so that's one of the points of bishop b5 it's all about rapid development now bishop b7 would be a normal move here and then we might get a, a continuation like this king nice on b1 tucked out of the way and then well white has stability in the center and can start on the usual kingside play and black's queenside play isn't really that far advanced so i think white would certainly have the better chances in that position but you know, nothing clear as yet seeing that Akobian decided to try and get things started on the queen side and that's why he played pawn to a6 putting the question to the bishop now it doesn't really make a lot of sense for the bishop to come back uh, in this case something like this and then c4 i think would be dangerous because you can see this attack would come quite quickly but of course the idea is simply to take on c6 and in that way you gain time and it's very important that white reacts quickly here otherwise black will play c4 b5 and so on so f5 is a vital move but as i said because the bishop has left f1 then it's possible to get the the major pieces to the f file very quickly and this attack with f5 is very dangerous first of all we should ask the question what happens if this pawn is taken well in that case you can see that d5 is now much weaker and we can take on c5 and then on d5 and actually this is very promising for white if black had already castled here and sorted himself out be a different story but with the king in the middle it takes time to get things going and here well a simple move queen d4 and this end game is very pleasant for white let's come back to this position f5 the move just played how do you cope with this Jacobian played the most aggressive move, c4, still hoping to initiate this queenside play with b5, b4. So this raises the stakes. White has to react very quickly here. But I mean there's a couple of couple of ideas. Bishop g5 looks like a very promising continuation, and I think it is quite good. Caruana rejected this because he couldn't quite see how to make progress after bishop f8 although i think switching taking on e6 and switching to the f file certainly looks dangerous caruana thought for about half an hour in this position very interesting he's often prepared to invest time at critical moments in the game you compare that attitude with Magnus Carlsen who somehow is a little bit fearful of investing so much time and likes to play a quick practical move we saw that in his game against Wojtaszek the other day when he looked at this knight d5 sacrifice but well after just a few minutes rejected it and played another move with success however it just shows the contrasting styles between Carlsen and Caruana after half an hour Fabiano played f6 very very promising pawn sacrifice although it's not evident why at first glance so this was taken now knight takes will allow knight e5 and rook comes to f1 very dangerous indeed that's why Akobian played bishop takes f6 now perhaps after a pawn sacrifice we're expecting some kind of dynamic speedy follow-up simply rook f1 just bringing the rook to the f file where there's a few sensitive spots Cobian continued with f, uh, with b5 excuse me getting his queenside play going and now again a very calm move from caruana he played queen f2 now he'd calculated all this out but I think it takes great nerve to play in such a patient way, such a patient build-up of the attack when your opponent 
is steaming down the board in front of your king. Okay, what's, what's the big idea? Well, the king is in trouble, actually. F7 is the target. Let's see what happens if we play, for example, bishop b7 and perhaps try to bring the king to safety. Knight e5 comes very quickly and this presents difficulties for black. So if, well, knight takes, will land into queen takes f6 and that wins on the spot. And if bishop takes, then we break through to f7. And the problem here is that, well, all the lines are opening up. Black is still a pawn up, but now you can see that bishop has nice possibilities here. There could be a sacrifice here. It's extremely difficult for black to uh, coordinate his forces. So, for example, after king c7, then here's a very attractive sacrifice. And out of the blue, black's queen is trapped in this position. So this is the problem, that the normal developing moves like bishop b7 don't actually consolidate and if castles kingside, well, thank you very much. I think white's attack already looks absolutely devastating, particularly with que black's queen way across on the other side of the board. Queen f2 just played. Akobian met it with b4, continuing with his attack. So he's not backing down. Here's an interesting moment. In fact, it's possible to play knight e4, sacrificing a piece here. And... The engines will tell you that uh, this is quite promising for white. But Caruana, after just a five seconds thought, played knight e2. And his judgment was absolutely correct. He realised that actually black's counterplay on the queen side isn't going very far. But I tell you, this takes nerves off steel. Threat is still to come in with knight e5. And if, say, bishop b7 trying to defend against this, knight e5 comes anyway. Now, how do you defend f7? This is not easy. It's also a knight coming into d4. Well, if rook f8, then bishop f6 wins an exchange, and this should be winning for white. So after knight e2, Akobian ploughed on with his attack. And first glance, this looks terrifying. But Fabi had it under control. Knight e5. This is extraordinary. Just allowing the pawn to be taken in the corner. So this is what happened. Queen f7. So Caruana breaks through. And pawn takes pawn, threatening to get a new queen. And king d2. Of course, Caruana would have calculated all this way back when he invested that half hour on the clock but still when you even when you get to this position this is quite scary so the rook preventing the pawn from queening now how can black consolidate at the other end of the board not easy you want to run with the king but then comes knight d4 and knight e6 check therefore a cobian played rook f8 but fabi just snapped a pawn off Rooks were exchanged. And now there is a problem for black because, well, let's say you play a move like rook b8. Let's, let's discover what the threat is. Then knight d4, this move again. Hitting the queen, hitting the pawn here. The queen has to keep hold of the pawn. But then white breaks through very simply. A check on e6. And thank you very much. The queen is in the bag. That's why Akobian played d4, which gives his queen some room on d5 when the knight takes here. But now Fabi just played very simply. Fine, it's not possible to play knight takes pawn, but simply queen takes pawn. And, well, this endgame is just very, very good for white. So, for example, after... Let's say bishop b7. Well, black is finally coordinating, but simply rook a1. And 
white takes care of this pawn and then is several pawns up and should be a very comfortable win for white. White's pieces are actually beautifully placed for the end game. The king can always come to c3. Well, instead of a hopelessly lost endgame, Akobian continued in the spirit of the game, trying to somehow find a trick. A check. That was blocked. But in fact, he's now going downhill very rapidly. Let's have a quick look at what happens if he makes a new queen. Well, it's forced checkmate after this. And there are some really nice variations. Let me show you one of them. In fact, the, the queen, knight and bishop can force a checkmate here. Let's just go through. I mean, it's all, it's a forcing variation. It's not so difficult. Let me, here's, here's for me the most attractive. King c7, we give a check with the knight. King steps back. And knight d8, checkmate. Beautiful stuff. There are other variations, but it's all white forces mate with checks. It's, it's not so difficult. I say not, not so difficult here and now. Not so easy when you've got this at the board. Knight e5 played. And now a beautiful finish. Giving up the rook. Absolutely fantastic. If... Bishop d7, then once again, the queen, bishop, and knight are a deadly combination, and the king simply cannot escape its fate. Knight c6. Let's go to the very end. We take the queen, black gets a new queen, and then queen e8, mate. Akobian took the rook. And now a check with the bishop. Queen takes knight, and here he resigned. Well, let's just go to the end. Let's checkmate again. We take that, and then queen c7 is checkmate. Wow. What a tour de force from Fabiano. Absolutely smashing victory. He's just on flying form, and I thought he would have crashed in this tournament. Three tournaments are in a row he's played at the very highest level and he's still performing absolutely brilliantly. That victory pulls him up to joint first place in the tournament. He's in shared first with Sam Shankland who's also he's having an excellent tournament and a half point behind Wesley So. Hikaru Nakamura having a bit of a nightmare. He hasn't won a game so far. He has just three out of seven. In the next two rounds, Caruana faces tough opponents. He has Wesley So in round eight with the black pieces, and then Hikaru Nakamura in round nine. Bit of a grudge match there. So if Fabiano can get through the next two rounds, it's a big if. He could be en route for the championship. Fantastic stuff. If you want to see Fabiano's uh, win against the French winner from round two, then do check out the info tab and the video description where you'll find links to uh, that video and various others like uh, a Caruana playlist. And, well, I'll be uh, keeping, keeping you up to date with how things progress in the US Championship coming soon. And watch out for news of my new Powerplay DVD. Thanks for watching.